Hi, I'm Jessica with So Many Creations. In this video, I'll walk you step by step through making this quick and easy tablet holder. There's an optional outside pocket, and all you'll need are some basic supplies fabric, fusible interfacing, fusible fleece, and of course a zipper. You can download the free info sheet from my website found on the tutorials page, which includes a template for the scoop pocket. It also has some tips for measuring and some information about my favorite interfacing. So let's get started. This quick and easy laptop or tablet holder includes an outside scoop pocket. This is great for holding your charger or your earbuds or anything else you need to carry along with your device. There's also a zipper closure on the top and inside is completely lined with no raw edges. So let's see how to measure for your device. To measure your device, you're going to measure first across the width, and mine is measuring 10 inches. And then you're going to measure the height of your device. Mine is measuring um, about, let's see, seven and a half inches. If you're in between sizes, it's always best to round up. Bigger is better in this case. So when I'm ready to cut my fabric pieces, I'm going to cut them two inches wider and two inches higher. So I would cut mine 12 inches wide by nine and a half inches high. I've already gone ahead and cut my two lining pieces, again, nine and a half by 12, and I've cut my two outside pieces, also nine and a half by 12. Those are the measurements for my particular device. And I've cut the outside pocket. I have an outside and a lining for that piece, and I cut those the same width, so they're both 12 inches, but I made them an inch shorter. So instead of being nine and a half, they're only eight and a half high. Now let's talk about interfacing. For the outside pocket, I don't interface the lining. That will reduce some of the bulk. For the outside pocket front piece, I do add interfacing. And for these four main pieces, the two outsides and two linings, I've added fusible decor bond as well as fusible fleece. So you want interfacing as well as fleece to add some padding and protection. I'll show you how to add your fleece and give you some tips on that as well. When it comes to adding fleece, I have a few tips for you that will help to make it easier. On the back of my outside piece, I've already added my fusible decor bond, and I've talked about this in a few videos if you'd like to watch those. After I fuse that on, that's going to give the fabric some body. I'm going to add the fleece. So the first thing I do is put the bumpy side of the fleece on the interfacing, and I kind of roughly center it. It's about a half inch off from the top and bottom, as well as the sides. It doesn't need to be perfect, but I try to keep it out of the seam allowance, so I do the best that I can here. So what I do is I just kind of eyeball it, get it in place. Again, the bumpy side is facing the fabric, and then I flip it over. And I grab my iron and with steam, I like to run the iron over the top of the fabric. This kind of helps to warm and melt the glue just a little bit. And then if I turn it over and put my iron right on the fleece, I find that it doesn't shrivel and shrink around the edges as much as it does if I just come in first and do it this way. And then I'll just continue pressing until my fleece is adhered. Next, we'll prepare the outside scoop pocket, which is completely optional if you prefer to skip this part. So the first thing I do is pin together my outside and my lining piece. Again, the lining does not have interfacing and the outside does. I pin them right sides together. And on the back of my outside piece, I have marked with a T for top. My fabric is directional and I just wanna make sure that when I do my cutting that I cut from the correct side. And I've gone ahead and I've just found the center by folding and I made a little mark on the back. It's on the interfacing side and it's actually going to be cut away so it doesn't matter what you mark with. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and grab my template. And on the website, you can download this template for free. There are a couple different sizes. So this is the smaller one, and it all depends on what device you're making it for. This one was a little bit too small for this tablet holder. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab the other size, and I've already gone ahead and cut it out. So this is the larger version. And I've taken mine and just folded it in half and I made a mark in pencil so I can see where the center is. I'm going to take the scoop and move it right up to the top edge of my fabric aligning the center on my template with the center on the fabric. And then I'm just gonna take this over to the cutting mat and I'm gonna cut that scoop out. I like to cut this still pinned and I leave the interfaced piece on top when I'm cutting. I've gone ahead and I've done my trimming and my pieces are still pinned together so they're ready to take to the machine. I'm gonna go ahead and sew with a quarter of an inch seam making sure to backstitch when I start and stop right across this top edge and it's best to leave the interface piece on top when you're sewing. I've gone ahead and stitched across the top curved edge. I backstitched when I started and stopped. 
Before I turn this right side out, I'm gonna take my small scissors and just make some small snips along the curved edge. I find that this makes it turn a lot smoother and it looks nicer in the end. My snips are about an eighth of an inch in. I don't wanna cut through the seam that I just sewed and they're about a quarter to a half inch apart. It's really not pertinent that these are exact. So I just kinda of make my little snips here and now I can go ahead and take out my pins and turn this right side out. I'm gonna go ahead and just finger press a little bit and then I'm gonna grab my iron and press this top seam really smoothly. The better you press it, the better it will look when you take it to top stitch. So I just work my way around here. I try to get the lining tucked down behind the outside. I don't like it to show. You can leave it showing a little bit if you would like. And now I'm gonna grab my iron I'm working with a nice hot ironwood steam and I'll give this a good press and then top stitch. I've top stitched the top curved edge of my pocket using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. I also went ahead and stitched within the seam allowance down on the bottom just to make sure that the lining piece doesn't shift when I'm adding it onto the outside of my tablet holder. So I'm gonna grab one of my outside pieces. This is one that has the interfacing and fleece. I'm gonna place my pocket lining up the bottom and the sides, and just stitch within the seam allowance down the sides and bottom. Now it's time to add the zipper and complete our tablet holder. So I've gone ahead and basted my pocket in place, and I've grabbed my zipper. And when it comes to zippers, as long as it's plastic and you can sew over it, it will work. You wanna make sure it's about three or more inches longer than the top. That will help in construction. So since my piece is 12 inches wide, my zipper is 15 inches wide. I'm gonna take this zipper right here, and this does look like metal, but it's actually plastic, one of our zipper by the yard pieces. I'm also gonna need a lining piece, but I like to get this started, just the zipper and the outside first. I'm gonna take my zipper and place it right side down. And I do like to add a clip here on the end just to make sure that my uh, pole doesn't fall off. I find it helpful. So I'm adding my zipper to the top edge so it's above the pocket right side down and I'm gonna grab some pins. Make sure that your pins are facing down. That way when you add the lining piece, you can still see them so you won't accidentally sew over them and you can take them out. You can use clips if you would prefer for this, but I like to pin in place, especially for the first edge. So I'm just aligning that edge, pinning down, and then I'm gonna go ahead and grab one of my lining pieces and I'm gonna place that right side down. So they're right sides together, the outside and the zipper, and then the lining is right side down on top of the outside. Now I don't move any of these pins, but I'll add a couple of clips just to hold this in place. Again, pin or clip, don't take out what you've already put in, just add a few more. Now I can take this to the sewing machine. Again, those edges are nice and lined up on the top there, and I can sew a quarter of an inch all the way across. Make sure that you backstitch when you start and stop. And don't worry that the pull is hanging off using a quarter of an inch seam and backstitch when I started and stopped right across the edge here. So now I'm going to turn this right side out. So I'm going to end up with my interfacing and fleece touching. My outside and my lining are facing right side out. And I'm going to flatten out my zipper as best as I can with my fingers before I grab my iron. Don't worry if your zipper has moved at all, if it's not perfectly straight. When your piece is finished, it's really not that noticeable, so don't stress about it. I'll go ahead and I like to iron from the front and then I also will flip it over and iron from the back. You wanna make sure that your lining doesn't roll up and get caught in the zipper, and if you're only looking from the front, sometimes that can happen. So now that I pressed, I'm gonna go ahead and add to the other side of the zipper my second outside piece and second lining piece. I'm gonna start with the outside, and I'm gonna take my outside right side down on the opposite side of the zipper, so it's right sides together with the other outside and I'm just gonna flip this over quick to show you. I'll take my other lining piece and that will go right side down on this lining piece. I will go ahead and pin and clip before I sew, but just so you can see how it looks. So your linings are right sides together, your outsides are right sides together, and your zipper is in the middle. You'll pin or clip and then sew right across that top edge. I've gone ahead and done my sewing. I stitched a quarter of an inch and back stitched across those two pieces. Now I'm going to open this side up and give this a good press as well. Again, my interfacing and fleece are touching. My outside and my lining are facing outward. So I'm pressing from the outside and then I'm gonna flip this over and press on the lining side. Again, you wanna be really careful that this doesn't roll towards the zipper and get caught when you do your top stitching. So I'll give this a really good press with steam. My zipper is not perfectly straight, but I am not gonna stress about that. 
So now that I have this ready, I'm going to take this over to the sewing machine and do my top stitching. I usually go about an eighth of an inch or so. When you see on this finished bag here how these corners dip down, the more top stitching that you do, the more that will happen. So I do about an eighth of an inch. Now that my top stitching is done, I'm ready to complete my bag. I've top stitched about an eighth of an inch on either side of the zipper, right through to the lining. And now I'm going to move my zipper pull into the middle of the bag. Up until now, it did not matter that it was hanging off the edge. Now we want to make sure that that pull is inside the bag. You're going to take your two outside pieces, place them right sides together, and flip your two lining pieces over so those are also right sides together. And I'm going to grab some clips. I start at the corner and just line up the bottom edges here. Add a couple of clips. You can use pins as well. This bag can be a little thick, so I do like to use clips. I'm going to add one on each of the sides. I'm going to skip the zipper for right now. I'll come back to that. So I flip this over. My outsides, again, are right sides together. So I'll add a few clips aligning the bottom edges here and aligning the sides. And now let's talk about how to sew over the zipper so that it looks as best as it can. I'm going to start over here. This is the open side. And what it's doing right now, going opposite directions, that's what we don't want to happen. You want your zipper teeth facing the same direction and preferably towards the lining. That will make that little dip in the corner less than it would be if it faced the other way. And I'm not putting the teeth right on top of each other. I'm putting them next to each other. It's not going to be 100% perfect with this technique, but it's one of the easiest zipper techniques that I have found. I'm going to go ahead and flip this over. Now this side is a little bit more challenging because it's the closed side. Again, my teeth are facing towards the lining and I'm going to flatten them out a little bit. They're not sitting on top of each other. We don't want to break our sewing machines. And I just put a clip right there. Now I'm ready to go ahead and sew all the way around, leaving an opening in the lining. I've gone ahead and sewn using a quarter of an inch seam allowance and I left a nice size opening in the lining. That's going to be for turning, so I think the bigger the better. I'm going to go ahead and trim these corners here. I just like to trim them at a slight angle. I think that it makes it turn a little bit better and look neater when it's finished. When I get over here to the zipper, I'm going to trim off those ends. I don't need those hanging out in the bag either. And continue cutting my corners, especially on the outside where it's a little bit thicker with the pocket. So I'll go ahead and get rid of those. You can see that my fleece has not gotten caught in my seam allowance and that's fine. That's reduced a lot of the bulk. And now I'm going to go ahead and through this opening, turn my pouch. I've turned everything right side out. I used my fingers as well as my turning tool. And I've gone ahead and pushed out those corners as best as I can on the lining as well as the outside. I can give this a good press. And the last thing I need to do is just trim up a couple of these threads here and then close the lining. You can do this by machine or by hand. I like to do everything by machine. So I'll just turn those edges under and stitch about an eighth of an inch across. I've stitched my opening closed. I like to do this by machine. Again, you can do it by hand if you prefer. I just turn the edges under and stitch. And now that it's done, I'm going to put the lining right into the outside of the bag and just push those corners out as best as you can tuck that lining in. I get my hands in there and really smooth it as best as I can do. And once that's in there, I can take my iron and give that one final press. Now let's see if my iPad fits. It does. Nice and snug. It's not going to fall out. And my pouch is complete. So now I can make one for all of my devices just to add a little bit of extra color to my world and a little extra protection. Thanks for joining me today.